So we've finally gotten our hands on the new Apocalypse DLC once again over on the community test environment for Battlefield 1. There's been numerous changes to each of the Apocalypse maps in an effort to make them more balanced and add more cover. If you remember the last time these maps were tested, they left a bit of a sour taste in people's mouths. The maps were wide open with barely any cover, spawn trapping, and the overall experience was very lackluster for this final DLC. With this new CTE update, a lot of the feedback that was given to DICE actually made it into the new maps one way or another. So let's go ahead and find out. As always, we'll start off with the most important changes first, and in this case, that's the maps. For Caporetto, more cover for the Austro-Hungarian spawn, and more cover for flags B and E. Overall, lots more cover has been added to this map with the focus of being the downhill lanes leading to the A flag. You'll hear me say this a lot, but from my playtests, it's an improvement over the last build. But sometimes, it would take around half of the match to reach the first objective as the attacking team. I still believe that Conquest Assault should be removed from Caporetto to give the Austrians a bit more of a fighting chance, since the uphill advantage is pretty much useless at this point, since you become easy pickings for any sniper down below. Once the attackers do break out of the first objective, things become a little more fair. They added more cover here and there that does allow you to move from objective to objective more safely. But keep in mind that Caporetto isn't the best map out there, and with the release later this month, this probably is as good as it can get. For Passchendaele, things are even better. Passchendaele was already the best map for this DLC, no questions asked. And for the most part, not a lot of things have changed. Travel distance was tweaked overall between spawns and objectives, but the main thing that was looked at was the spawn traps, specifically for the German team. Machine gun emplacements, elite kit spawns, and the overall spawns in the German HQ were spread out as well. Keep in mind that the spawn traps on this map still occur, it's just easier to break out of them. Get a good player on an elite kit or with a squad behind them, a good tanker, and you're guaranteed to break out of your spawn, no problem. Now for the big one, which is the Somme. This map was pretty much destined to be the worst map for this DLC. Large open plains with literally no cover for the British to use to break out of their spawn was a nightmare. DICE has listened to our feedback and massive improvements were made to this map. It's almost a night and day difference of this build compared to the last. At least 5 or more trenches in the entire map has been added. Craters, terrain adjustments, wider and deeper trench networks make this map relatively easy to get to from objective to objective. For the most part, I'd say once you get past objective A, you can spend most of your time in trench combat alone. The number of British tanks also has been reduced to one, and more elite kits spawn as well, with the tank hunter being available at objective B. I can say with confidence that this map is going to be great, but it's time to address the bad. Just like the last build, the British team still gets spawn trapped to the point where they can't get even a single objective for the entirety of the round. The Livens projector, MGs, and trenches has been added to the British spawn to give them some help, but this simply does not work. The machine guns are pretty much an invitation to get sniped, and the Livens projector is your only real way of getting to objective A. To completely fix the spawn trap issue, I suggest moving the British spawn and removing Conquest Assault entirely. Have the British spawn where A flag is and have their base extending out to the edges of the river. Remove Conquest Assault so you can have 5 maps in total to fight over, bringing most of the combat to the center of the map where the D flag is located, especially since most of the trench networks lead to B some way or another. Obviously, flag C and B might need to be pushed back a little since the British spawn is so close. For the most part, I think this fix would make this map much more enjoyable for both parties to make it more of an even playing field. It just seems like the Conquest Assault game mode is being forced onto maps that have no business having it. The game mode doesn't suit maps like the Somme or Caporetto, and maps like Albion, Cape Hells, and Heligoland Bight fit the game mode perfectly. With some slight fixes to the spawn locations and game mode change, these maps are perfect for release. Well, that about wraps up the new maps in this update. Let's go over some of the weapon changes, which are actually worth watching since they appears to be a new god gun for the assault class. 
For the RSC SMG, the sights have been improved to provide a clear picture of the target. Damage drop-offs were also changed, so now it only has a minimum of 5 shots to kill at extreme range, and vertical recoil was reduced as well. These changes make the gun a lot more competitive within the assault class, and for the most effective use, think of this gun to be more of a medic rifle than a submachine gun. Place your shots carefully and make the most out of your low ammo count. The Howell automatic rifle now has a bipod for all variants and some slight tweaks as well. For the MG0818, it now has more vertical recoil and some tweaks to the sights and animations. Every other weapon for this DLC had no major changes, so they're pretty much the same from the last build. But an interesting change was made for the SMG0818. Currently, it sits as one of the most accurate assault guns with a large magazine and a slow rate of fire. Right now, it's pretty much a mini automatico. It now fires at 770 rounds per minute which is the same as Battlefield 4's Ace-23. It's absolutely insane. It has a fair bit of recoil, but makes up for it with its large 80-round magazine, or clip since it uses multiple clips strung together. Anyways, this thing is an absolute monster now. If you have the CTE downloaded, you have to try this out as soon as possible before it gets nerfed. The Automatico did get an overall recoil reduction to make it more controllable at longer ranges. Some minor changes to both the Hellregel, Machine Pistol, and Ribby Rolls were made as well. Some minor changes here, the AT grenade damage against players has been reduced, which makes sense since they're meant to be anti-vehicle and not to be for killing infantry. The Cavalry class also got quite the buff as well. You can now heal and resupply yourself without leaving the horse, and more damage resistance was added while you're mounted on the horse. So that about wraps up everything for this February patch preview currently on the CTE. I'll leave a link down below to the Reddit post containing the patch notes and their appropriate surveys. Make sure to fill those surveys out since they go a long way to help in the development of these maps. Each survey is read, so don't think your feedback is going to waste. Anyways, that's it for today's video. Make sure to share it so we can get the CTE crew to hopefully implement some of these changes. And as always, it's been Bloodhound, and I'll catch you guys on the next one.